Deadpool and Spider-Man are about to have one of the weirdest double dates of all time. One that ends up with Deadpool dragging Spidey from the depths of hell. We start with Spider-Man giving his new buddy Deadpool a call. Deadpool's a bit preoccupied, currently in a shootout where he's adjusting a few bad guys. So, do you want to like, hang out? I'll text you the address, wear comfortable shoes. Spidey heads back to the lab at Parker Industries where his partner, Anna Maria, chastises his decision to hang out with that maniac. Deadpool is not a guy you can save. Everyone can be saved. Back at home, Deadpool talks to his wife, the succubus Sheikla, who's equally confused. You can't assassinate Peter Parker and be friends with Spider-Man. That night, Spidey swings down to meet Deadpool at the Hell House. Are you ready for the greatest night of your life? I hope not, because seriously, you should have higher aspirations. A guy like Spider-Man can't just pop into any random club in full costume, and there's no way he'd unmask for a night out on the town. But Deadpool's one step ahead. Voila, image inducer, instant privacy. Deadpool's even got an alias for Spidey, Leonardo DiCaprio. No, not that one. This Leo runs a chain of adult novelty shops. Deadpool hits a button on the image inducer and Spider Leo is less than impressed. I, uh, I'm black. I know, awesome, right? Everyone wants to be black, unless you're racist. Spidey concedes and Deadpool leads him inside to meet his date, Jenny. Deadpool tells Spidey to order a drink, relax a little bit. I don't drink alcohol. I just wanna know who Jenny is. Those words are not a sentence. I don't drink alcohol. How else would you block out the voices? Ugh, who is Jenny? At that moment, Jenny walks up. Um, Leo? Standing in front of the table is a beautiful blonde. Spidey is immediately smitten and speechless. Deadpool explains that he's trying to get the nervous Spidey to relax a little more, but Jenny seems into him. They hit it off immediately. Deadpool stands on the table yelling to the entire club that it's time to make a toast. He's gonna get us kicked out. I doubt it. It's his club. As the night goes on, Jenny and Spidey seem like a match made in heaven. I feel like I've known you all my life. Is that crazy? Totally. Totally same as he's over here. As Jenny and Spidey lean in for a kiss, lightning crashes through the ceiling of the club. It's Deadpool's date, Lady Thor Jane Foster. Thor is your date? You're married. Top five free pass list. Deadpool pulls out the list. Hillary Clinton, but only if she becomes president. Thor, if he ever becomes a girl. Hellcat, Zombie B. Arthur, and Spider-Man. Before Spidey can comment on that final name, Thor lowers to the floor. Deadpool, what be thine emergency? We got a crisis, Thor. 10 barrels of meat and no Norse goddess to drink them. What game are you at, fool? I was tending to important matters. Which explains why you're so tense. Are you familiar with the concept of a free pass? Thor turns her gaze to more important things. She senses magic, not of the romantic kind, but of the succubus kind. Jenny starts changing, eyes filled with rage, hair turned disheveled, and a couple demon horns sticking out of her skull. Jenny, apparently a succubus and cousin to Shikla, attacks Thor. Were you aware that she was an Asgardian hating succubus when you set us up? Dude, could you not think about yourself for like a second? I probably missed my shot with Thor. Spidey kicks into action, clicking the button on his image inducer and sporting the old red and blue. Thor hits Jenny with her hammer. Spidey rushes to her side, still madly in love. Ah, oh, you smell like my favorite candy. Andy. Back to Helheim with you, Damoness. If it's war you want, Thor will give you a war. Deadpool pops in, offering her a drink and reminding her not to discuss politics, Asgardian or otherwise, on a first date. After I rid this plane of that monster, you and I will have words, trickster. Thor throws back the glass of me. As the two women continue their fighting, Wade clicks a button on a remote. A pit of mud emerges from the ground. He's been planning this all along. Jenny, Look down for a moment. Uh-oh, webs, we gotta roll. I think you're supposed to fight in the mud. It's more slippier. Uh, slippery ear? You disgusting half-man. You engineered a battle between blood enemies that we would fight in the mud for your amusement? Thor grabs Deadpool by the throat and blasts him with lightning. Spider-Man stops her saying there's got to be something they can do to make amends. In fact, the girls have the perfect idea. The next thing we see, Spidey and Deadpool are up on stage in front of a roaring crowd wearing nothing but their masks and underwear. You will dance for our pleasure. I can't decide whether this is one of my best dreams come true or a nightmare. Def Leppard pours through the club and Spider-Man immediately finds his groove. He hollers at Deadpool to 
join in and the duo dance the night away. How long do you think we can make them do this? Until it bores us. As the night wraps, the two buddies howl in laughter at one of the most bizarre double dates anyone's ever been on. Oh god, I needed that. Next morning, Peter Parker's back at home, talking on the phone with Anna Maria about the incredible night he just had. Peter's doorbell rings, he goes to answer it. Hey, you're not the breakfast guy. A red dot appears on Peter's forehead. It's Deadpool holding a gun. Deadpool fires point blank, killing Peter Parker. Deadpool spits on the body and calls his new BFF, Spider-Man, to thank him for the night out. Peter opens his eyes, but he's not in his apartment. There's a bright, glaring light. Am I, am I dead? This doesn't feel dead, and I know dead. Elsewhere, Deadpool joins his demonic wife to witness the eternal torture of Peter's soul. So, do you applaud or tip the guy? I don't want to be rude. As they approach the torture room, only to see a nervous demon next to an empty soul-torturing chair. Where in the hell, literally, is the soul of Peter Parker? Are you certain that Mr. Parker had a reservation for today? I made the reservation when I put two slugs in his brain box. No need to be rude. Just because we're the grand torturers of hell doesn't mean we don't have feelings. They return to the scene of the murder where Deadpool made the reservation. Deadpool grabs Peter's lifeless corpse by the hair, showing that he is clearly, unmistakably dead. Ooh, my common sense is tingling. Something went south with this gig. Meanwhile, Peter's having a few issues of his own, battling a demon. When I lived, you ruined me. Even in death, you haunted my dreams. Finally, Parker, revenge belongs to me. No, this isn't happening. I am not dead. You were always dead, Peter. All of your life, all life is just an illusion. Peter recognizes the voice, the manifesto, and the overuse of the word illusion. Oh my god, Mysterio? Ah, that's a smart boy. Let's play a game. But suddenly, Peter disappears in a flash of yellow light right out of Mysterio's claws. Peter jolts out of bed, but before he can gather his bearings, he turns to see a shotgun inches from his head. Deadpool fires, killing Peter again. Talk about a bad day. I brought him back from the dead so you could shoot him in the head again? This time it's different. I know it's technical, but last time I used a pistol. This is a 44 gauge double barrel shotgun. Apparently in the world of insane assassins, this works as the functional opposite of turn it off and back on again. Sheikla opens a portal back to hell to check on Peter's status. If this doesn't work, they can't resurrect him again. But through the portal, all they see is a couple of demons trying to pull a fast one, poorly trying to trick Deadpool and Sheikla into thinking Peter's being tortured. Are you going to say it or do I have to? I messed up. I got played. Peter Parker isn't in hell because Peter Parker wasn't a bad guy, but Deadpool has a plan, another plan. How flexible can you get on the till death do you part aspect of our vows? Back in death, Peter's taking a trip down memory lane, looking into the eyes of people he's lost, Gwen Stacy, his father, and the reformed Doc Ock. Suddenly, they lurch toward him, start attacking him. I will break you for this, Beck. Mysterio floats down to the scuffle, wearing a hellish version of his normal garb. It's not real. No? Then strike out and kill those you loved and killed. As Doc Ock holds Peter back, Peter's own father strikes him in the face. Such sweet agony. This may not be the revenge that I planned, but it will do. Mysterio's trademark monologue is cut off. His fishbowl head explodes. Standing in the wake is Deadpool, covered head to toe in dripping blood. Deadpool, I'm in hell. Not yet, trust me. Deadpool gives Peter a rundown. Peter died. While in a coma, Mysterio hijacked Peter's soul to suck him down into limbo. Spider-Man sent Deadpool down to pull him out. But since I don't die well, we only have a little bit of time for me to hail Mary you home. Questions? Deadpool left out the part where his wife butchered him with swords and connected his soul to Peter's by soaking him in Peter's blood. Spider-Man sent you? Who killed me? But more important issues are at hand. Mysterio grows a thousand feet tall, ready to squash his enemy like a bug. Dude, no time for little details like your murderer. Prioritize! If you want to live, you need to man up and fight for it. Peter focuses his soul on the task at hand, the only way to battle this darkness. When he does this, he channels the power and costume of Spider-Man. Note to self, I made a bad call, a misjudgment. Peter Parker is not just an okay guy I whiffed by mistake, he's a great guy. The giant Mysterio keeps trying to hit Peter, but he can't. I don't understand. You should be crippled here. After all the pain you've caused. Pain I've caused? 
You twisted monster! Peter climbs up Mysterio's arm and bashes him in the face, once again shattering that fishbowl. Mysterio screams at Deadpool. This is his fault after all. Parker was a mistake, so I'm fixing it. I will never kill again. And no one's listening. Mysterio tumbles backward and turns into his human-sized form, defeated. Spidey huffs and wheezes. Why is fighting in the afterlife so tiring? <laughs> Deadpool talks to his wife physically. His body's about to reject death, so it's now or never. But he says he needs to call her back. He sees a familiar face. Hey you, it's been a while. Standing in front of him is the personification of death. Someone Deadpool had a fling with back in the day. Death hates Deadpool, but he needs a favor. The blood-soaking Deadpool drizzles off of him, leaving him naked in front of her, but lacking his traditional permanent scarring. I've been inspired by a friend, and so I'm trying to fix the last mistake I've planned to make, ever. Death strokes his hair and pulls him close. You've changed. I'm trying. The two share a kiss, bringing him back to the world of the living, face to face with his wife. You're sleeping in the nail room tonight. You have death breath. At that same time, Peter jolts up from his bed for the second time that day. Sitting at his feet is a little Deadpool plush holding a note. Oh hell, it all started when this guy hired me to kill you. And I did. Deadpool explained his mistake and now he hopes to never make one like that again. On an unrelated topic, Please don't tell Spider-Man. As an I'm sorry gift, Deadpool will take down the guy that just gave him this job, free of charge. So anyway, welcome back to life. I got it covered, no worries.